Wingspan. Leaves DJ talk. JD Bunkus. Sam McKee. Hey, buddy. Leafs lose in overtime. But man, that was a, a thrilling, thrilling hockey game. A million different things happen. Where do you want to start? Uh it's a great question. I don't really know where I want to start. I I can do it. Okay. Well, let me guess what you're gonna go to. Sure. Sam Snow bounces back. No, I don't know. What are you gonna go to for no, this? but okay. Well, <laughs> look, I'll try I'll try to tie this all together in a nice little neat little bow. I actually thought that the Leafs came out with a pretty disgraceful performance tonight all around. They came out and ah, I shouldn't say disgraceful. That's strong, but it was a lackluster <laughs> week. I got to save my disgracefuls, okay? That wasn't disgraceful. It they was just lackluster. They walked through the first period. They were horrible. Yeah, they didn't show up. They didn't show horrible. up. It was not a good period for that team. They basically played with no energy. Detroit beat them to every single puck, won mm -hmm. every single battle, looked like a team that was chasing a playoff spot, while Toronto looked like a team that was chasing a guy's milestone, okay? Mm -hmm. They yeah. didn't play very well, and Detroit jumped them. And their yep. goaltender gave up a couple of goals that I didn't was like, eh, well, you can't really fault him too much on that one. And then all of a sudden he gave up a fourth in mm. a first period. And I went into, oh my God, I don't really like this. And I was texting you saying, hey man, Samsonov's body language is not something that I'm really enjoying the last couple of games. I'm trying to defend the guy. I'm trying not to freak out and be Mr. Flip Flopper. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But boy, oh boy, that fourth goal went in and he didn't have his post. And I said to myself, this is trouble. I think you got to start Joe Wool to start the second period. They start the second period and yeah. Samsonov is in net. And I really thought it was Sheldon Keefe sending a message to his team and to his goaltender saying, show me something now, show me some toughness or else the kid might be in net against the Florida Panthers on Tuesday night. And mm -hmm. Samsonov responded and the Leafs responded. And it sucks that they lost the point in overtime, whatever. They had some opportunities down the stretch to close it in the third where it was tied. But I think that honestly, the most, uh, my biggest takeaway from this game was that mm -hmm. the Leafs as a whole rebounded in the second period and put together a great, great effort um, centered around the energy that comes from their best player, Austin Matthews, whenever he scores goals and has an opportunity to score more of them. How's that? Sounds good. I like it. I like it a lot. I will say that I won't give Samson a whole lot of credit for the second period. I think that was a lot of just the Leafs as a wave, special teams mm -hmm. getting back into it. I mean, what, I, would Detroit have five shots in the second period? Six shots? Yeah, but like he, they, made they, couple, he made that, a couple saves in the third, in that third period. period. He made yeah. a couple good ones. But like, I, I really don't give him a ton of credit for the second period. thought he was better in the good. third. Through that kick save he makes at the end of the game. Excellent. Like, he was better in the third. But yeah, I just I think that Keith probably threw some... Uh, threw some Gatorade around in between the first and second was like, Hey, stop trying to feed Matthews. Try to play some hockey here. Try to wake up a little yeah. bit. Try to like figure out. And Keith talked about it after last game about how pissed off he was. Well, he wasn't, he didn't say that he was pissed off in the media, but you could tell that he was pissed off about how much they were trying to feed Matthews and saying, boys, he doesn't need that. He's really good. Like you don't need to yeah. feed him. He doesn't need that to happen. You can just like, it's going to happen in the flow of a game. So yeah, I did like the response a lot. I liked the response more than I hated the first period, but boy, it's close. God, I hated that first period, but we can, we can move past it. Try not to be too negative. I like the, the response. Last week is, go, go ahead. I like the response more just because yeah, of course. for, for a couple too, of reasons, but not by a ton. One, <laughs> one, one is I'll just say that I actually got to give the Leafs a ton of credit for the way that they've played down the stretch here, given that like they've, they've been basically put in pen with a matchup with Florida home ice away. Maybe they could have taken a couple of these games more seriously, but Man, they're playing teams like the Devils and the oh, Capitals yeah. on these Tuesday nights. They've jammed all these games that the schedule makers put into the very back you end of the playoff team. Uh, Pittsburgh, uh, or sorry, Washington Capitals. Is that what yeah, you're talking yeah, about? Hey, playoff team. It's it's very strange rooting for <laughs> Ovi to make the playoffs but score no goals and the Penguins to lose and Sidney Crosby to get a lot. I got a lot a of hard, weird. We're in a hard spot here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all discombobulated, uh, brother. But you're, but I'm just saying that these are teams that are 20 plus points behind the Leafs in the standings. They're yeah, kind of absolutely. jokes. And the Leafs have had to cram all these games into what? They had, I think, I want to say nine games in 17 days or eight games in 17 days. Like it's not, it's not an easy finish for these guys. And for the most part, they've been pretty locked in. And some of you are going to be out there going, well, they should be locked in always. I just don't think that's human nature. I don't think it's no, the way it's, it's going to work. And I do think that if the Leafs were playing for something that was a higher stake, I would probably be more critical. But I actually just look at it and say, man, on balance, these guys have been pretty dialed in. They've definitely shored up a bunch of the slow starts. Tonight was mm -hmm. a bad one. It's not totally inexcusable. But I like the comeback because I, 
I'm giving Samsonov a little bit more credit than you. I actually think that he made two huge saves to start that second period. And the team kind of went like, oh, okay. Get, like now we've actually got a shot. And then Nick Robertson, mm. this is probably the next place to go, flies mm. in with one of the most beautiful goals. I think this is the best goal of his career so far. For sure. Right? No question. Well, well it's just, the, yeah. it's the pace that he flies to the neutral zone with. That's just like yeah. breathtaking here. You know, you don't think of him as a skater. Like, you know, you think of it just as the shot one, not. kind of the package guy. And this yeah. is just head up, coming through, curl and drag, Whew. beats an NHL goalie from the top of the circle, high glove. I mean, I sent out a tweet about the high glove stuff with James Reimer. I was having uh, Patrice Bergeron flashbacks all of a sudden. Uh. But yeah, that was a really, it's a really nice shot by Robertson. And one of my mean nicknames that I wasn't going to give out on the show was No Stakes Nick because he exclusively scored like in seven one games and he would score in these meaningless games. Yep. And on the whole, this game is pretty meaningless, but this is not a meaningless goal in this game. This completely woke up the team. They're down 4-1. He picks up a puck in his own zone and says, guess what, boys? I'm putting this in the in the net. Skates down the ice, curl and drag, fires at top corner. I thought it was a huge goal for the Leaf and really woke up the building, really woke up the whole team. So, yeah, man, and especially now, and we're going to get into the, some of the negative stuff with a couple of the injuries tonight, especially now with Bobby McMahon getting banged up. Don't know what happened to him. Obviously don't know the, you know, there could be extremely cautious with it. Don't know the severity of the injury clearly at this point, but with him going out, you want to see that kind of stuff from Robertson mm -hmm. because it's getting closer and closer to him being a bigger factor in the playoffs. It's a great goal from him and a big one that kind of got the team going. Yeah, Mike and the production crew definitely keep an eye on what Keith has to say post game about McMahon's injury and let us know. But yeah, uh, my first thought when Robertson scored that goal was if I'm him and I get called in the coach's office right before game one of the playoffs and I'm expecting them to tell me that I'm sitting down, I just have the highlights, that <laughs> highlight, and I'm just playing it. And the on one my against phone. Florida, the one against Florida where he makes the great defensive play, beats the defense, goes in and undresses Brabovsky. Those are the two I'm showing them right away. That's, I'm, but I'm just, I'm rolling that tape and it's on, and I'm just going tap, and I'm, <laughs> I'm tapping the replay every single time. Uh -huh. That's Tap. a cute pick of your fam you got there, bud. Tap. What a family man yeah, you are. Thanks. God, I you're got a cute. cute family. I got a cute family. Yeah, you do. Right? You know what I'm saying? Like, that was a gorgeous goal. And those are the kind of ones where it's impossible. Listen, I'll admit it. I'm a, I'll am be a flip-flopper. I watch every single one of these games. And sometimes of course, prison, man. But, no, but Robertson Reeves has always been a difficult choice if it comes down to that. Like, again, we don't know if it will. But it's hard to ignore when a guy breaks a goal like that and you go, mm. oh, yeah. Like Ryan Reeves isn't doing that in a bajillion years. Like he's he never could, done that he, once in his career, maybe even correct. a junior. <laughs> yeah. And <laughs> yeah, it's like there's 0% chance yeah. you go back to house league. He didn't have that goal. <laughs> like that was nasty and yeah. it's hard to ignore game breakers. And so, yeah, I, I really do think that the flip flopping that we're all kind of doing as fans thinking who should be in, who should be out. I think the coaching staff's doing that too. And I'm sure that they For do sure. have like, I'm sure Sheldon Keefe has it written down in pen, like who's going to be on the playoff roster, mm -hmm. but that every night he thinks about where that is in a drawer somewhere. And he's like, man, I just, I don't know. This is a, which I had some white out, which I had yeah. some white out. Cause I don't know. Maybe. Like I need one of those pens that do erasers, you know, the eracer pens yes. back in the day. Whenever we of course. Them about those. Uh, of course buddy. But I still want Reeves in game one against Florida, but if that's what it's going to yeah. be, and it's not set in stone clearly with the Bruins who are, they're going back and forth with, but I think the Bruins have a game of hand on, on them and they're, they're up on Pittsburgh mm -hmm. right now, I think, as as uh, as we're recording this. So I don't want to get too ahead of myself. But if it's Florida, I still want Reeves in game one. At this point, I don't know if it's going to be Reeves and Robertson, but it's probably going to be a choice between them because Yarncroft is going to be coming back soon too. But mm -hmm. Robertson's going to play in the series. It's very obvious. But mm -hmm. you got to, you know what? To quote one of my favorite shows of all time, Shorzy, you got to set the tone. Like You can't just, you know, it's the first game against Florida in their building. They're going to be running around like chickens with their heads cut off. You got to have Reeves in that game. I'm sorry. That, that's just, you sign Ryan Reeves, you pay him 1.3 million bucks a year. You're not going to use him in that one. Like then it was the stupidest signing of all time to me. That's how I kind yeah. of handicap it. So what's crazy though, when I'm thinking about this game, like in its totality, I do think that those are the two most like important things that came out of it is the two things that we touched on, which is like, again, outside of injuries, like those injuries are obviously super impactful, but just like, Samsonov not getting pulled in that game and then just normalizing and finishing the game strong for his psyche, for the psyche of the fan base, for the psyche of the team, 
for his ability, massive. Robertson Agreed. scoring that goal and putting another one on tape for the coaching staff where they look down at the end of the year and see what his goals per game are. And yeah, scratch and score and no stakes, Nick, all this different, all the jokes that we make, like still the NHL and he still produced this year at a really good clip. And so, yeah, I think those are the two biggest things. Now on to the bad stuff, the injuries. Um, I don't know what, did you catch what happened to McMahon? Like, yeah, they, they, showed a, even... they, they, they did show a highlight. It was like down in the uh, in the corner. He, oh, I think yeah. we have. Oh, perfect. We have the highlight. Thanks, uh, thanks, Mike. He gets a little tied up here. A little weird one. I don't really know. Lower body, maybe tweaked a knee, little ankle. Like I, I don't know, man. That's a weird one. Just a bit of an awkward fall. That looked pretty innocent. Yeah. So your guess is as good as mine on that one. Could have been precautionary. They're like, this is a meaningless game. Let's just hold them out. Like they took Edmondson out tonight with something because they just yeah. they're they want to be super wow. careful. So maybe that's what it is. But mm -hmm. I, you know, you never like one of these kind of nothing plays because it always seems like those are like the really weird ones that that hurt you. But yeah, it's McMahon. I think we can all agree since he was like the best second best goal scorer on this team for a stretch there, he's definitely taken a step back. But he's clearly still mm -hmm. a very important guy for this team in terms of being able to go up and down the lineup. Big guy, flies, can score you a goal, kills penalties. Like, he's still a very important guy to this team. So it'd be a big loss. But I'm much more concerned about Jake McCabe, bud. Jake yeah, McCabe. Jake McCabe is heart and soul, like, warrior. You know, we talk about meaningless games. This guy's blocking a shot with his orbital bone in a meaningless game. Like, it's 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 heart and soul stuff. But, God, mm -hmm. I like, he went off. That's as bad as you've seen a guy go off. Like, how does he... Look at it. Gets up from this, skates off. Like that is tough, 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 tough guy. But yeah, you got to worry about the long term to here, man. Because if that's yeah, I don't know. Those face bones, they're out for a long time. Swelling, concussion, all that stuff. It's mm -hmm. a concerning one because he is I mean, huge for them. Huge. He's gonna be. He's gonna be wearing a cage when he comes back. That's pretty yeah. clear. Uh, Which sucks like, for those guys. Those guys hate wearing cages. Yeah, no, he'll, he, he, he's not, he's gonna be wearing some kind of face protection because there's no way you eat that kind of a puck off the face. I gotta tell you, like, it almost looks like he knows he's gonna wear that off the face when he blocks that yeah. shot. Like, that is a warrior block. Warrior, dude. <laughs> dude, like, I, I, I watch you that. And, the most. <laughs> dude, I, I, he's a psychopath. Yes, that guy, totally. like the way he lines people up, the way sometimes he sees red, like you and I talk mm -hmm. about it at times where he goes full nutso, right? Mm -hmm. Like sometimes things happen in a game and you go, oh, you've just lost him for the next like three minutes. He's not going to give you a normal shift because now he's going to chase guys around or yeah, he's, he's looking. For them. He's number one, all wires cross team in the league. First team. Yes. No question. Starting lefty on all, all uh, wires cross team. No question. And this is the thing that's kind of like heartbreaking about that play is I saw that and I just went, I love you, man. Yes, <laughs> you same. are, same. you are incredible that you would do that. Are you like, that is how many guys in the NHL are blocking that shot that way and just fearlessly. And again, it's, it's a Detroit Red Wings game where, okay, you're kind of back in it, but this isn't the do or die game. Yeah. This is one where you've got to just stay healthy and, he still sacrifices the body. So there is a small part of me that looks at it and goes, man, I wish that he would be a little bit more cautious in a spot like this. But then it, I just tell myself, that's not who he is, clearly. He's mm -hmm. someone who's going to sacrifice for his teammates. He's going to sacrifice the body. He's going to play with that lunatic mentality that he brings to the team. And frankly, they need it come playoff time. So he's got to be healthy. You hope that he's all right, more so yeah. than anything. Um, I'm going to remain optimistic until they tell me that he is out for a while, but yeah, yeah. when he's obviously skating off and he's leaking that much yeah. uh, and the, the puck hits where it hits, it's hard not to envision a scenario where he's out for quite some time. Well, I mean, he played half the season with his nose, like hanging off. So yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure he will do every possible guess thing what? to be playing. Didn't change a thing about his game. He didn't wear a, he didn't wear a, <laughs> a, a, a cage and he no. got hit. Like six times. It was like meat by the end of the, the time. Yeah, so. didn't care. Kept going. Kept going. Him, him and like uh, cave, for our, my UFC cave. fight fans out there today, Rory oh. McDonald, that knows, and Jake McCabe's nose. Those mm. are the two that I'll remember forever. I understand UFC that 300. reference. I understand. You that understand reference. that reference? No. Hell no. <laughs> oh, really? Uh, it's no, like no, one of the no. most famous fights in UFC history, uh, and it was a Canadian. I'll anyway, uh, thoughts and prayers with that guy because, yeah, hopefully he's all right. Um, what next? Oh, yeah. I guess time for Matthews. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nice. We've entered the nightmare zone. Your nightmare <laughs> zone. <laughs> Not mine. We've entered it, baby. <laughs> We've entered it. Going into this is my Tuesday dream. Night, Tuesday night against the number one team that you're going to be playing in the playoffs. Dirtiest team in the league. Meaningless game. Looking for blood. Trying to stop him from scoring 70. I don't know. I just I don't think it's a great recipe. He's clearly playing both games until he gets 70, of course. Yeah. But I just I'm gonna be watching like this. That's it. Hey, how I many games has Matthews so I, played against the Florida Panthers where he's gotten hurt? I don't know, but they they, not, they weren't cursing in 70 and they weren't about to play him on Saturday night for a for a in a playoff none. series. Listen, the answer is none. Uh, I'm some people to, choose I'm allowed to be afraid, bud. I'm allowed to yeah. be afraid. And no one said you're not allowed to be afraid. I'm really excited for him to get it, and I want him to get it. But boy, I'm yeah. going to be petrified watching those games. Petrified. I get it. Some yeah. people live in fear, and yes, some people. I am one of those. I'm a Toronto sports fan. Come and on. They embrace it, <laughs> and they just charge forward with optimism, a smile on their face, and oh, yeah, joy in their true. heart. Mister Optimistic, <laughs> JD Bunkett. I'll put that on your tombstone there, Squinzy. Give me a break. Yeah. Here died the most optimistic guy. Yeah, right, right. Uh, right. I just. I got, I got to tell you, I'm just choosing not to live in that reality. Like, if it happens, right. it happens. I just I, – I mean this, dude. You know me. You've known me a long time. I don't fear the Matthews injury. I'm not trying to call it out new existence. Move. I actually think the people who are, like, fretting it are the ones that are doing it the most. I just – like, I think the guy scoring 70 goals means a lot. It means a thing. It does? To see something that hasn't happened since the 90s. Like, we've debated it over and over again, but I'm just yep. saying that – he was always going to play in the Florida game. There was no scenario where he was going to sit the last two games of the season anyway. And you so think? you don't think he gets no, it tonight? It's no. a week. No, no way. Why would they sit him? He's red hot. He's playing yeah. amazing hockey. The yeah. only thing that I thought was kind of funny in this hockey game was that, you know, he rips it. He gets the goal on the power play, oh my uh, which was awesome. Like he almost stings one. And I thought for sure he was going to get it at this point. Like the team yeah. is buzzing. I thought what the Leafs were going to win by like play. four goals. Like you freeze frame, you you go look, live look into my living room in this moment, and I'm going. Leafs are winning tonight, probably seven or eight to four. Yeah, like this is going to be <laughs> a bloodbath for these guys. And then lucky for the Red Wings that the whistle blew to start the you know or end the second period because it was just like a huge wave of momentum. Hmm. But when he almost scored, the play right after he jumps back out on the ice, he rips down there. And he almost tucks one between Reimer's legs and then goes into the boards as hard as I've seen him go into the boards since Nick Cronwall stapled him also in a Detroit game oh like four God. years ago. Uh, I thought there's no way he's going to score 70. That puck's going to be in the net and he's going to be hurt. And Over the this, year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Leaf fans, you got what you wanted, Leaf fans. See? See? You shouldn't have played. If that had happened... I would have been the most insufferable guy in the history of Lee's talk. See, you got what you have. You want it. You got it. <laughs> we could, honestly, I really do think if that happened, it would irreparably damage our friendship. Like, yeah, we really can't have this happen. We cannot have Austin Matthews get hurt for the sake of a great friendship. Like, it he just got cannot happen. Rocked. Yeah, he, so. He, I thought he was dead. Like, when he first moved, because he stares at it, and he yeah. does the classic thing after you have a big fall, which is to like immediately be like, I'm totally fine. But then mm. you try to make that second move and then your body's falling apart. Like yeah. you're like, oh no, this is actually really bad. And he kind of made that second movement and it was ugly. And I was, oh no, please. Oh no. Oh no. Hey, he's a big durable boy. I'll tell you what, he's in the prime of his life. If I yeah. fell onto the boards like that, I ain't showing up for work on Monday. So uh, there's a big durable boy. Good play. Uh, I'll tell you though, there's no debate about the next two games like there's people like there's just he does not rest like i don't know why no. we're gonna have this debate like people will probably say like you know i know kipper's take on monday he'll be that ah that team success is more important like i know what he's gonna say blah blah blah, blah. but i know what he's gonna say but he's just gonna play he's gonna play i'll talk to me if he scores against florida get 70 maybe he sits a wednesday against tampa fine we can have that sure. conversation no problem but there's just no way that you know, if he's looking I, I, like for, I said, if he's looking for 70 on Wednesday, he's playing. I, I told you, first of all, in terms of injuries, the other day I said to you, it rained and my knee hurt. <laughs> I just was walking <laughs> down the stairs. I was like, my knee is 
killing me from rain. <laughs> so yeah, built a little different yeah. than Austin Matthews. Two is I I will stay I will die on this hill. He was never coming out for the Florida game, anyways. And okay. two is that man. Individual success can be team success. Like these two things don't have to be like pulled apart. Look how yeah. well the Leafs played right after Matthew scored that goal. Look how you all felt watching that hockey game after he scored that goal. Like mm -hmm. they were buzzing. The team yeah. is at its very best when Austin Matthews is ripping goals. And mm -hmm. that is still the formula for the postseason as well is get on his back and ride the energy and the momentum of the best goal scorer on the planet scoring big goals. And yeah. so, yes. Do I think that there could be a conversation for the final game of the year against Tampa on a back-to-back -back if he's sitting at 69? Yeah. I do. I really think that he might go to the coaching staff. They'll have a chat with him, and maybe he'll think that the best thing for the entire team is if he sits that hockey game. If he yeah. plays it, I won't fault him. I won't live in fear. But I don't think the mm -hmm. Florida game was ever in question, and hopefully he can just remove that equation by scoring that final goal against the Florida Panthers uh, on, uh, what is it, Tuesday? Yeah, before we move on yeah. to the next thing I wanted to talk about, just on the Matthews yeah. thing, just got to yeah. give a quick shout out to uh, my boy, Sean Kent, him and the boys down there for a bachelor party, going to both Florida games for the bachelor party, got a chance to see 70, couldn't have worked out better for him. So congrats to those fellas. Quick shout out to them. Unbelievable yeah, that is, luck. That is fortunate. Can that you imagine the, the luck? They're watching that game tonight being like, please don't score, please don't score, please don't yeah. score. So good for them. Love it. They'll have a good old time yeah. down there. Yeah, you're a bad friend hoping that Matthew's going to sit two games at your buddy's bachelor party is the bigger thing that I take away from this. <laughs> game. That's okay. Uh, my last Wait. thing from this game oh, uh, is just that I think 16 and 91 are really starting to click a little bit together. They had some real moments in this game, and when they throw 88 on that line, it mm -hmm. looks awesome. And mm -hmm. you like from a top six standpoint, that's the best I've ever felt about what the Leafs can put together is Absolutely. what they've got going right now. Absolutely. I, the thing I wanted to bring up, I'm glad you did it. Uh, Marner, since he's come back, has had a point in every game. Thought he's been yep. strong. Thought the first couple games maybe looked a little bit tentative, but he's all the way back now. He's back mm -hmm. to just him himself flying around there. Uh, yeah, I, I do like that line together. And you're just losing Willie so hard on that third line. Like the one goal tonight, he's just completely checked out. Him and Labushkin are skating around in circles. Like he's obviously just not, he's, you're losing him down there. And to be honest, if I'm Willie Nylander and I had a thought in my head other than like scoring goals and being good at hockey, I'd be kind of a little bit pissed at Sheldon Keefe that I'm going towards 100 goals and you throw 100 points and you throw me down on the fourth, on the third line. That thought would probably cross, cross my mind. But mm. I just, I like that they have this option. But I did love the thought of having Willie Nylander attacking other teams' third lines in the yeah. playoffs and having that mix. But it just feels like you know how Keith coaches in the playoffs, especially like the you know the, this is the that, that was easy button or whatever. As soon as one thing goes wrong, it's like bang, load it up, baby, hit the load it up button. So just the fact that he has this loaded up option, he's going to be going to it a lot. He's going to be going to it a hell of a lot, and it's gonna it's gonna be a conversation for sure. I don't that's fine. It it's, a way, no. I, I, it's a good I, line. It's a good line. But I don't even view it that way as like uh, when things are going bad. Line. I think it's actually this is part of the plan. Like you do. have Nylander down on the third line, try mm -hmm. and take advantage of some matchups. I think part of the reason yeah. he's checked out is that, or checked out. I don't know the way that he's looked. The way that he's looked. You're right. There's been some moments of being lost. He's also on a, a terrible defensive line when he's down there. Yeah. So when he's in his own end. And he's not just fully engaged. Okay. Uh, you go, yeah, it doesn't look great. But I, I think it's hard for people to go, oh, we don't want Matthews to be playing this game. We don't want Matthews to be doing this. But then they also want Nylander to just be giving it 110%. I actually like Nylander lately. He, he's he been talking to the media about how he knows that the time that matters is coming up. He still did get a point tonight. He still did finish with 22 minutes tonight. Like, he's playing him, man. He's giving him opportunities. He's saying, go yeah. out there on an offense first line with good matchups. Why can't you get points doing that? Like, yeah. You absolutely can. So from a get bumped down the lineup standpoint, I don't think that's a, like, to me, that doesn't hold as much water given that he's still playing with offensive guys and that he is supposed to be getting the matchups. And I think he was always going to get time with uh, Marner and with Tavares. Like that yeah. was always going to be a piece of this. And so when those three guys get together, I really like it. It feels dangerous. They're out shooting opponents in the last two games by like a billion to one. 
And yeah, I just, I, I kind of like what they've unlocked here. I just hope that the Leafs get healthy because again, it's like Edmondson and McMahon, and McMahon yeah. now, and you know, uh, McCabe with something to his face and yeah. we still don't really fully know what's up with Yarncroc. And yeah, it's just, they're, they're kind of getting a, a few tough Edmonton, injuries at the wrong time. Edmondson's a band-aid a bit, eh? He's, uh, that's, he's had that, that rap over his career that he's been hurt a lot. And it's like already been two things. It's two separate things and, mm. you know, a month since being here. So now that's something to keep an eye on heading into the playoffs. There are probably things he'd play through in the playoffs. I think he even said that after the last game, yeah. that if it was playoffs, he probably would have played. So he's a guy that'll play through stuff. So that's fine. But uh, just wanted to give a shout out to the crowd tonight. I thought mm. hyper aware, hyper into it. Even after they went down 4-1, big pops for the goals. That Matthews pop was massive. And when he came yeah. on at the ice at the end, everybody getting fired up, starting to cheer, starting to chant. Saturday night crowds at Scotiabank Arena, they get a little greased up against a rival, you know, lots of red in the building. It's it's great. So, uh, okay. So a couple updates here from our good, our good friend, Mike Jose. McMahon determining severity from Keefe. McCabe is fine. Couldn't come back from swelling. For, and yeah. those are from Keefe. That so makes that's sense. Good. You were going to know from that one. But yeah, determining severity on McC McMahon is less than I – were. Not bad, but also worse than I would want to hear. I want to be like, yeah, pretty much a nothing is what I wanted. So not that. broken orbital bone is what it kind of looked like when he first got hit in the face. So that's good. Good stuff. Just swelling. Just, to, just gonna have a mutilated face. Good for you. Yeah. <laughs> hey, so nothing's he's okay. changed. He's gonna break every mirror he looks in, but he's fine. Same guy. <laughs> I'm with you on the crowd, though. I think that when McKay blocked the shot, everybody knew what was up. Yeah. But to me. This is, again, a byproduct of having Austin Matthews scoring 70 goals is you gave yep. the fans Absolutely. something to really care about down the stretch. You're going to these games, and, like, it matters. You and I mm -hmm. just went to the Jays the other day, last night. It was mm -hmm. dead after they were set. Mm -hmm. I went to a Raptors game the other night. It was dead. Uh, well, obviously, but still. Yeah. You'll see Shane <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, well, they're playing. I mean, they got guys off the street in the starting lineup. But so. <laughs> I just like that there's something in the city that has a ton of buzz behind it. Yeah. And that now there's even more anticipation. That is one thing, though, that I didn't think of. Uh, mm. Is that it would have happened, yeah, in front of that hot Saturday night crowd would have been a nice awesome. reward for them for Matthews to get it. Last thing for me, I think I've mm. said this probably every two time these two teams play, especially when it's the Red Wings wearing their whites. There is nothing more visually pleasing to my eye like that I actually like looking at. So, you know, people get moved by art. Like they want to go yeah. to a museum and they want to mm. see beautiful paintings and like, it just brother. makes me feel a certain way. And when I see red versus blue in hockey on clean white ice mm -hmm. and these two sweaters are playing, I just like, I want to watch it. I'm like a cat looking at a light. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, I'm just a laser pointer. I love it. It just makes me happy. There are a lot of, I mean, there's a lot of really aesthetically pleasing jersey matchups in the league, but this not many, one. not many can be better than this. I, I actually Nothing. would like, I would actually like the Red Wings to go with their full reds and the Leafs go with their full blues one time. They did that in the Winter Classic, that like the one Winter it's Classic so where nice. Bozak scored the winner. Like it's just, there's such both beautiful colors of red and blue, Ugh. beautiful jerseys, like, you know, both yeah. top five jerseys in the league, gorgeous. Yeah. I, I think the Red Wings. You know, everybody talks about the the Blackhawks being number one, but I do think the Red Wings gives it a serious run for their money. That that logo, I've always, is, I've always had Red spectacular logo. The Red Wings, it's so so nice. So I'm glad you brought that up as a fellow Jersey lover myself. Big fan yeah. of that. I mean, you know, it's same. It's still blue, but you know, Rangers yeah. and Red Wings is also amazing. Same with the blue and blue and white. But any original six really looks great. No, but yeah, I, you're it, you're on it. At least, at least saying, the Red Wings are yeah. This is my number one, like something yep. about it. And it makes me feel like, like there's tons of great Jersey battles. And some of them are because of us having seen the matchups, yeah. like us having seen like big games, like Red Wings in Colorado. Like that always feels beautiful big. to see, even though now it's like, oh, Meaning. it's not really the color schemes. <laughs> this one's just purely like, did you, if you have a bubble hockey set growing up, like most Canadians our age, you had red versus white. Yep. Like you had exactly a red versus blue. You had this and like it, it, I don't know. There's just something about it that looks beautiful to me. This is like the ultimate hockey sweater color matchup that you're supposed to well, have. Two I huge love huge sports colors in general. 
like yeah, it's soccer. Like, yeah, it's like it's just like yeah. two, but on the white ice, you're right. It's beautiful. Red and blue on so, the white ice is just oh, it's so coming gorgeous. this summer. Uh, our podcast on the comprehensive rankings of of hockey jerseys, uh, from one to thirty four, or however many leagues. I'm Mine starting a little bit every time, but yeah. I would say that my top three are definitely in some order: Red Wings, Rangers, and Penguins. Yeah, I was gonna say Flames Whites top five for me too. Ooh, Flames, yeah, Flames Whites are, so are too. beautiful. Flames Whites yeah, are top Flames five. White. And Leafs are in top five. But I agree with those other three. I really agree with those other three. So that's good. But Leafs Leafs jerseys it depends on the one for me always. Yeah. I I my favorite are the Bieber Reverse Red. There, those are my favorites. I actually like the gray and my worst zag ever is pretending to like those reverse retro Leafs gray and blue. That's my worst zag yeah. ever. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I hate it. That's we all so right, we all have some bad ones, but that may be my that's worst. That's a bad one. Know. That's a bad one. I still think the worst one is the aretnas. We saw a guy wearing that oh, hat the yeah. other day. Aretnas Awful. was just Awful. horrific. Yeah, yeah they agreed. couldn't have done worse with that. Uh, all right, if you're watching on, and someone just got so triggered in the ha- in the chat with an aretnas wearing jersey. Wearing his aretnas hat. <laughs> <It's> like, oh. <laughs> There's some guy just ah, like going into the chat to be like, shut up. You're so wrong. You're so mad. Oh, God. I can't wait. Uh, I can't wait to read it in the chat because please Buddy. leave a comment. Hit the thumbs up. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at JD Bunkers at Sammy McKee. Uh, you can subscribe to this podcast on iTunes and on Spotify, which I really hope that you do. And if you do, please leave five stars because it helps people find us and it helps the show grow. Uh, and then we will see you Tuesday night in Sam's I, you spookiest will, game of the year. You will not see me. I'm off. I'm All off right. Tuesday. You're too afraid. So you won't even show your face. It's boring. <laughs> I mean, it's, yeah. it's boring to you. And I don't. Hey, anyone, don't call me. Don't text me tomorrow. We're in for the most electric Master Sunday in years. Oh, yeah. So, buddy, my couch is just. It's gonna be you know getting a hurting from me. So don't call me. Cannot don't wait. talk to me. Cannot wait. Uh, for go. JD Bungus and Sam McKee. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. We'll see you. I'll see you Tuesday night. Yeah.